Alright, this one's called Leakers Get Sued by Aniplex and no one is safe. Now, we recently watched a video from Chibi explaining about the manga leaks and people being in other places in the world outside of Japanese and US jurisdiction, but it seems like there's some update and Nikocado Avocado. If you don't know who this guy is, oh man, this is a fucking... Oh, you don't know what you're missing out on. Like, <laughs> this guy did mukbang content for years was so fat, people are making fun of him, saying, oh my god, just stop eating, bro. And he, he kept it a secret! Ozempic! Look at this shit! To Nakato Avocado's sudden slim down, showcasing he is a mastermind and potential- Two steps ahead. <laughs> we are all monkeys, and we got farmed by Nakato Avocado. He was ahead this entire time. You thought you were beyond him? Just because you're watching the dude? Eat his life away? Nah, man, we got fucking farmed. Essentially, a supervillain on YouTube to the 12 accounts that have had their personal information given to Japan by. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, so Twitter Blue, right? Twitter Blue, you, uh, that means that even if you're not from US, right, you have your information documented. They gave it to Japan. Now, I don't see Mia here. I don't see, is any of your Twitter accounts here? Is, is there any manga leakers in chat? By the United States court system, it's been a wild 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So today's video is a follow-up from yesterday's video. And to make a long story short for those that did not watch yesterday's video, basically Japan went to the United States court system and also to Twitter and was like, Twitter, we want you to give the personal information of these massive anime and manga leakers to us and they listened. we can seek justice against them and potentially put them behind bars. That is what Japan was asking Twitter and the United States government to do. And it was revealed in a court case document yesterday. And this is a public court case document with 20 pages this is an official document this is not fake you can easily find it because it is on public records sure. in the state of california but getting into the main point basically you know this court case document is official public information and now we know exactly who's potentially going to be facing charges now you're probably wondering why don't you see certain individual charges though now, I still don't know exactly how all this shit works. I'm just a stupid monkey reacting to anime on YouTube. But if these accounts information has been handed over from the Twitter blue information, right? From, you know, to US company to Japan. Now, what can the Japanese official do with this information? Let's say Mr. Warleaks here is in India. Great. You got his name. You got his address. What are you going to do? Are you going to show up to his house you can arrest the guy like how does this shit work that you know for a fact is massive massive leakers that everybody knows why are they not on this list especially if your personal information has been given over to japan well this court case in particular is actually focusing from aniplex mm -hmm. and toho AK2. oh we know them big Japanese anime companies. Yep. They are not manga companies. They are anime companies. So this is more or less a court case against anime. Co I have no qualms with Aniplex. Toho is a bit annoying for YouTube reaction stuff because on uh, the automatic upload check content ID, copyright claims will pass if you edit it correctly. But Toho animes, they are known to go and manually block animes after it's been published, after it bypasses the automatic check. Anime is like Jujutsu Kaisen, Frieden, what is there? Spikes Family, quite often you'll see from other reaction channels too if you are familiar with the anime reactions that Toho animes get blocked a lot after copyright upload. Copyright infringement and leaks, not manga copyright infringement and leaks. However, there was something that was mentioned by this Twitter user here, basically revealing there is an... Hey, that's our man, Asrata HS, the ReZero dude. Basically revealing there is an ongoing active court case against something affiliated with manga leaks and spoilers, etc. So we're probably going to see more information about this in maybe six months to a year. And probably a lot of big names, definitely some big names associated on this court case oh in the upcoming future. I feel like more or less this ongoing court case right here revealing these 12 accounts is pretty much the first step. And probably the beginning of the end, or maybe more. 
beginning of the end or the end of the beginning plus a showcasing a force and an example that it is being made that if you continue to play with fire you're gonna get burned you're mm -hmm. probably wondering to yourself how do they get caught well mm. this court case document does outline how they were caught and i will go over that in just a second but one thing i do want to talk about is the fact how does this affect you but it doesn't for the consumer unless you are a regular leak enjoyer most people just kind of sit until the official release so unless this somehow changes the upload schedule of the official releases i doubt it's really going to affect the average and consumer, right? Because honestly, after reading this court case document and after seeing the post and stuff detailing what's really going on, there is a little bit of concern even I have because one of the methods that were used to catch these said leakers yeah. are actually, in, in a way, it's because they posted a baked watermark image. And this baked watermark image could have circulated on Google. Baked watermark image. As in, you know, sometimes on YouTube video, like right over here for Chibi too, right? Sorry, let me just do this. This is a watermark. You see this over here? It's like a little logo to kind of like brand your shit. Could have trended and a lot of people right click saved as or saved it on their phone and have potentially posted it on social media to some shape or form. Okay. So it's very likely a lot of people that are relatively innocent and just repost content. Ah. Could wind up on a... <laughs> so... Leaks have the watermarks. You unknowingly shared the leak with that watermark, and now you have basically fucked yourself over. A list like this, and I'm just like, that seems a little bit extreme. Honestly. It does. But I don't know exactly how the filter happened, exactly how they decided on the account names or not, but it is pretty curious so to speak on the whole situation and i wonder how many people it theoretically could affect and how the common citizen that just reposts some of these images because not knowing any better they could theoretically face criminal charges if they i don't think it's gonna go to that extent right at the end of the day the average like 13 year old kid fucking reposting their favorite jujutsu kaisen spoiler manga panel that's not gonna go for that it just doesn't make sense it's, it's not reasonable but for those people who started sharing that source at the top level as in like the first person to distribute the leaks of course that's gonna get handled they just reposted a watermarked baked image but uh getting back into the main point one thing i want to detail here that is very important is is that most of these accounts here i i don't know them all individually i want to be blunt here but i am very well aware of pretty much all these accounts okay. and most of these accounts, besides one in particular, are actually not even leak accounts. They are accounts that more or less are either reposters <laughs> or people that just post staffed credit listing, which uh -oh. is relevant to this court case document I'll talk about. But like leaking staff for a really popular anime or manga series that's about to be made. And then that's not as bad as just leaking fucking straight up manga panels, but I guess it does impact, you know them trying to hide certain information not made to public just yet. Only one account in particular on this list is actually a bona fide genuine leaker. Yeah. And it's <laughs> I mean, the first one here it says at W E R leaks. Hmm. I wonder of all these different accounts, which one actually does leaking? Hmm, maybe this guy? No, it's 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 gotta be Mr. Root two five two five seven nine six eight. Fascinating that out of everyone that is on the platform, especially that does give anime leaks, they're not on here. Mm. It's pretty curious. It is legitimately curious. Anime leaks, safe. Manga leaks, bad. I wonder if they were used as scapegoats or not. These individuals, there's a lot of things I'm a little bit curious about. But uh, with that being said, how did they get this information? Well, for one, here's the thing. If you browser Twitter, yeah. your public information is it's now up there. on the site, and it is now effectively owned by them, and it, it's, you know, they can easily get it. They can easily give it to Japan, and let's explain why. So if you make a Twitter account, you obviously have to associate an email. Okay, fine. Let's say you have a burner email. It's not a real legit email. Sure. It's not even associated with the name. Okay, fine. Um, Twitter blue. Let's say you have a phone number associated with the burner account, phone number. Two-step verification. Well, your phone number is attached to the account now. Let's say you want to go one step further. You uh, want to get money from the platform Twitter blue. Well, you have to associate your full legal name. But you want to get money from the platform Twitter blue, bro. I don't trust 
Like, like, you don't make money off of Twitter, bro. Straight up. The biggest fucking accounts getting millions and millions of impressions every day. They're making shit nothing. The advertisement, the monetization process is shit. You're paying Twitter blue so that your tweets will be more visible. Like, you're fucking losing money. But yes, if you give Twitter blue, right? You're basically now, what are you doing? You know, you have some sort of payment information. These kind of records are definitely more useful to track you down as an individual rather than through burner emails and phone numbers. Potentially all sorts of other personal information, your address. Yeah, you get the mumbo yep. jumbo. So your now personal information is on Twitter. And even theoretically, if that's not even there and you don't go that step to get Twitter blue, your IP address is mm -hmm. on the platform. True. So what theoretically is happening here is if, you know, this information is given over to Japan's government. They know this information of the Twitter users that they're currently listing here on this. Okay. Document, and then potentially future offenders. But here's the thing. You're probably wondering to yourself, how how should you worry? Why should you worry, so to speak? Because if, let's say, you live in a country like India, Europe, yeah. you get the point, different country that's not what are they gonna in do? Japan or in the United States, how would this affect you? Well, it varies, obviously, from country to country. But if Japan does get this information from Twitter, which, aka, is a, a company that is based in America, it is a United States-based company, yeah. that means that... They can have access to information from people from different countries as well if you actively use the Twitter platform. So, what this means, Japan will find this information out. They'll say, ah, okay, you live in Europe, okay? And sure. they'll know where you're at, fix the yeah. IP address or whatever. And then, and then what? they will actively go talk to your government to try to get you to face criminal justice in the courts. Would those governments actually take this shit seriously? Like, I don't know if this is trivial or if this is, like, significant. Like, do governments actually give a fuck about this? Especially international affairs, which is, like, I don't give a fuck about... I don't Can Japan, like, escalate some shit? Like, how important is this? So, even if you live in a different country, it obviously varies from government to government. But a lot of people think they're safe because they live in a different country. But that is definitely not the case hmm. with the information that is now being given this is basically pandora's box the beginning of the end so to speak for people on twitter to actively spread and get leaks to trend online not just with manga content but in anime content as well so this is a pretty big deal a legitimately big deal for those that think they can get away with until these people actually <laughs> are given up by their own fucking country after japan requested i'm not gonna really act as if this is the end of the fucking world of leaks. I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Like, it, it, I have a hard time believing that just because Japan has your information from Twitter, that they can just request, like, India or Europe to be like, yep, hand over these dudes. They're gonna go to fucking jail. Yep, put them in criminal charges. It's like, how does that part work? And I'm very ignorant to this whole process, but just, just common sense-wise, it just feels a little insane, a little trivial for these companies to sorry these these countries to fucking abide by what japan wants stuff like this for a very long time and think that they don't have to worry because they don't live in the united states or even in japan so let's get into the actual court case documents and what is being outlined here for damages etc so this twitter user here has posted a nice little detailed walkthrough of what is going on so let's get into this and let's read it right. toho and aniplex two extremely large japanese anime production companies have submitted an application to sapio twitter for information of accounts posting leaks yep 12 accounts were listed and named and the application for the subpoena named three ways they were identified number one unauthorized and infringing post of images of episodes prior to the release date okay number two intentionally incorrect information in the credits to catch leakers what wait wait a minute so like the the, the anime studio companies during their pre-release shit they set a little trap they put the wrong credits in there so that it can be proof that whoever shares this false credit information <laughs> will now be tagged as leakers. Oh my god, that is a big brain play. Absolutely. AKA, what this is, Ooh. is 
for instance, if you post school, it's some classroom of the elite shit. Staff credits, like who is going to be working on the upcoming episode? Let's just say for like, let, let's think of a One Piece episode, okay? You you mention in like a listing on a Twitter post, oh, this is who's going to be the director. This is who's going to be the assistant director. Yeah. This is who's going to be animating the episode. This is a notable name working on the episode. You get the point. Basically, the incorrect information, intentionally incorrect information, is that the company Toho, Aniplex, and all them associated with it, they incorrectly intentionally give information over to certain people to give staff credits and if those staff credits Genius. were posted they could easily identify the source and where the leaks are potentially coming from so basically the individuals the accounts associated with this court case these are individuals that most likely even if they haven't posted leaks they have posted staff listing that was mm -hmm. of incorrect information and i know of a few that do post staff listings that is a part of this list and even if they did well <laughs> we learned something new guys don't post staff listings know it the point is is they got that information from somewhere and they can easily track that back to the source through that individual of who potentially gave them that information so more or less even if these accounts are relatively innocent they're going in file basically saying even if you don't know we know you got it from someone mm -hmm. so we want to know where you got this information from and they move up to the next person literal breadcrumbs that they can just follow back to the top of the chain to see who was the source leaker it's actually so smart so more or less like i said it is just uh they're going through all the different, you know, directions and tunnels, legal ways and stuff to be able to figure out where these leaks are exactly coming from. So besides the some companies do this as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard of these um, stories as well in corporate uh, white collar jobs where um, they try to smoke out a rat by sending intentionally uh, different emails, even though the contents of the emails is the same. There's slight modifications in the the wording or like white spaces formatting structure and then because every email was kind of unique that way you can exactly figure out who the rat was leaking the email content of corporates you know structures the obviously intentional incorrect staff listing to catch people you have number three Number three, watermarks that were baked into the episode to catch sources of leaks. Now, this is what I briefly talked about at the beginning of this video and why the average individual could theoretically worry mm -hmm. because... Basically, it's a literal stamp, right? It's a watermark that's just like very hidden or some shit. But uh, some people will start to distribute the leaks, right? And then other random 14-year-olds are just going to fucking retweet those posts because they love their favorite show, right? They have no clue what's going on. I doubt those kids. People that like shared those, it makes no sense. However, the source, if, if there is a way to identify the source of who distributed it, of course that matters. The thing is, is that th these watermarks that are baked in the image are probably very subtle, and only those that are affiliated with Aniplex, Toho, and probably working on the episode are aware of like, you know, the actual watermark baked into it. And it's probably so subtle that the all uh, like the average individual might not even notice it. Mm -hmm. And so when some of these images or scenes are posted online, they can easily figure out which department or which team potentially has leaked this because of the watermarked image. Ah, so even within their own organizations, right? Just to intentionally get uh like every different team working on different sections, like different watermarks. And if you find out online, you know, this specific image was leaked, then you'd be like, oh, it's team number B that leaked it. And then they can crack it and okay, okay. That's, so it's beyond just like the actual like outside of production and people that's like uh, distributing the shit leakers, but within, right? They're, they're smoking out the mole, like we said. So here's the concern for the average person. Obviously, images circulate online. I know for a fact I went on Google a lot to right-click, save as images, and post them. I've saved images from Twitter as well, and I have posted them. And it's like, you know for a fact there's a lot of accounts that do that. People that are completely unaware of this and all that, they're just wanting to post a cool image scene mm -hmm. because it's really cool and they like the way it looks. And I wonder where the filter part is of, like... How do they differentiate between those that obviously just right-click save as and are posting it to those that are actually actively leakers that are getting their source from somewhere? I'm legitimately curious because you know there's like hundreds of thousands of people that probably theoretically could wind up in the third category because... It just doesn't make sense from a resource perspective, right? Of are they really going to go after every fucking 12-year-old that posted his shit accidentally without knowing? It makes no sense, right? 
But there's got to be a way to identify the root cause of it and go after that. They potentially save an image and they post it. So you get the point of getting at. So this is a little bit concerning, honestly. I am curious to see, like I said, where the line is actually drawn with this court case. But anyways, going further, the intent of the application is that because Toho and Antiplex are foreign companies, aka Japanese-based, mm -hmm. they need to apply to actually file a subpoena against Twitter, aka to get the information. Why are they subpoenaing Twitter? Because they want to take legal action and they want Twitter to give up the leaker's info, yep. aka personal information, which I already outlined in this video. The screenshot of the subpoena to showcase that, you know, it's real and all that. And here's what they actually want. So what they want from the 12 accounts is all documents that show the names of the users, their email addresses, emails used for recovery purposes, Ooh, their phone numbers, accounts. all payment methods registered, all account access login info, IP addresses, access type, and more. Basically, they everything. want everything. Mm. They want everything. And so, yeah, uh, this is not looking good for these 12 individuals. I mean, like I said, a lot of these... Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen to these dudes, but, you know, at the end of the day, right? You play with fire, you should know what you're getting yourself into, right? You can argue about how this is all unfair, you can argue about the legality, the morals, ethics. I don't really care about any of that shit. I'm not siding with the corporations or the leakers. All I care about is, what is the rule set of the games that we're playing? And you should be aware of that when you're gonna play this game. When I'm coming into anime reactions, I know that copyright strikes and that shit can just kill me. Absolutely. But I know the rule set and I'm playing within it. Same for these people, right? What do you think is going to fucking happen if you start leaking important shit that hurts these huge corporations' bottom lines? Now, no one actually thought that Twitter would give information and then for fuck, fucking Japanese governments they use the information to contact, let's say, European governments, Indian governments. Like, who the fuck would ever thought that? However, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how this develops throughout the next like couple of months. Is this just a bluff? Are they actually going to make examples out of these people? Are there going to be more people going to be taken care of? Only time will tell. These individuals might be innocent, but more or less, I feel like if I had to take an educated guess, this is more, more or less like a scapegoats being used mm. to kind of push forward into the investment. Exactly. Like, this, this does feel like, again... I think that uh, it's a, just a public execution right now. It's like, they're very serious, and they're showing that we're not fucking around. Investigation, and I think this is leading up to something even bigger in the upcoming months to even Potentially. the following year or two. Because this just feels like the beginning. It really does. And Japan is... And what does that mean? We stop leaking on Twitter. People will start leaking on fucking, I don't know, 4chan. Reddit? Eh? It's a US company, I think, right? They could have the same shit of, you know, getting the information, but there's got to be different sources that people can leak and then use. I don't know. There's, I don't think leaks are going to go away, but for sure, the corporations are definitely cracking down and trying to make an example to show that we are not fucking around. It's really been pushing a lot of these legal cases as of late, so I'm curious to see where this will go. But uh, yeah, just wanted to update, on, update everybody on the. Thank you, Chibi, for the update. This kind of... I'm always so fascinated with... Not just, like, uh, court case dramas like this, but exactly how this could impact our channel as well, right? Because we're doing, obviously, anime reactions on YouTube. But at the end of the day, hey, I'm playing with unfair use, and these goddamn corporations cannot claim that my shit ain't transformative. But there's a the video. Please go like it. Check out Chibi's channel if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.